I'm Josh Catone. I'm the Features Editor at Mashable. I thought I'd change things up uh, here, and, and instead of doing our next speaker, I'm just going to tell you about my favorite episodes of Psych. So in the third season, uh, no, that's not what we're going to do. Um, it's, it's my great pleasure today to introduce to you our next speaker. Uh, Josh Capel is the founder of Scroll Motion, uh, which is a company that many of you probably haven't heard of. Um, but if you own a smartphone or a tablet, which I'm sure you do, uh, you, you've likely used one of their apps. Um, Josh, as Josh will show you, Scroll Motion has developed an impressive uh, digital platform that powers the uh, mobile and tablet apps for many of the world's largest multimedia and publishing companies. And one of the missions of Josh's work at Scroll Motion is to preserve the art and culture of print while, um, while transitioning uh, to new digital formats. So we're honored to have Josh with us for the first Mashable Connect. He's going to show you some stuff. He's going to talk for a little while, and then we're going to um, come back up here for some Q&A. You guys can write down questions, come to the mics when, when he's done. Um, so please join me in welcoming uh, to the stage Josh Capel. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, Scroll Motion is a company that started around the idea that all the content in the world was going to be sold again on devices just like this. And um, it's funny, uh, as I was walking down here, I was thinking about uh, one of my favorite Walt Disney quotes that, uh, that I feel is something that has always inspired me and something that I really sort of uh, try to put into the products that we build. And it is an ounce of treatment, a ton of treat. And what that means is, is by giving little things an ounce of treatment, you can actually create a ton of extra excitement and extra meaning for the person that's going to use that, that, uh, that app or that magazine or that textbook. And as you can see here, uh, these are a number of our different, uh, a number of the different uh, apps that we've built for different customers. And what's really powerful here is that they're all built on one platform. So we are powering kids' books like Arthur and Thomas and Sesame Street and Disney. We are powering Esquire and Oprah. Uh, we're powering things like Tron, which we did for Disney, as well as National Geographic Dynopedia, the NFL, uh, the uh, textbook platform for Houghton Mifflin Hardcourt, which I'll show you in a second, and, um, and also even the GE Annual Report. So one platform that's able to basically bring great amounts of content to a life to life in a way that's that's not reductive because you know i think that for a lot of you know companies that are looking to get into this space you know there's major major problems in converting massive amounts of print media to transform it into pixels and the urge is to somehow sometimes do it very easily you know do the most like make a pdf and put it onto a a, a tablet and we just think that that's a very reductive way of thinking about the media. And that what we've done is we've built experiences that we really try to enhance and bring to life and bring a lot of love to the experience. And uh, I'm going to start here with Esquire. So um, open up the app. This is what you see. Uh, the team at Esquire, led by David Granger, have done an amazing job of bringing a lot of love to uh, a digital magazine. Um, this app won the uh, Ellie Award, which is the, uh, for the best digital um, mobile edition of a magazine, which is the first time they ever gave it. This is an entirely HTML5 content package, meaning that all the content here is cut, paste, share, uh, all selectable, all portable, meaning that Content that lives in HTML5 can also be ported to other platforms like Android, like Chrome, like HP, like Microsoft. Um, and you know, the idea for us is to build these things easily and then allow users to engage them in other ways. So HTML also means that we can bring classic web experiences into a page. So what we have here is a, uh, a little survey on whether or not I'll be watching American Idol this year. And, uh, I think we know the answer is yes. Uh, but let's, let's actually find out. So when we get to the end of this little survey, what we have is a tiny little, uh, oop, please answer all the questions. Did I miss something? 
Ah, uh, thank you, audience. You said the fourth one. Oh, I have actually literally sat at the edge of my seat before. Thank you, I have. So at the end of this experience, what we have is a little computational moment where it's told me that, yes, I am going to watch American Idol, which we all knew. But, um, but at the same time, you know, ways of very simply making something a little bit more engaging, a little bit more interactive. Um, this is a very simple little idea on how to pack a suitcase. So um, just drag these little items into the suitcase. This is just JavaScript, you know, could not be easier to actually make. But uh, unfortunately, you have to have the Louis Vuitton suitcase to pack like that. But, uh, but you know, a, a very simple way of bringing a lot of love to the experience. Um, visual footnotes. Uh, and, and, and all kinds of other sorts of little fun things like, uh, you know, there are 360 rotations, but there are also ways of sort of taking a, a little experience and just making it a little more fun. Uh, ways of uh, bringing, you know, I just showed you one version of a survey. Here's another version. So that was about collecting data to sort of present a result. This is more like a survey that is somewhere between um, you know, I'm presenting you with the results as you touch them. So, you know, these are very, these are, these are simple tools, but they're tools designed to help uh, editors and publishers make, uh, you know, very simple and great, great material that takes full advantage of, of what you can do in this, in this space. Um, in addition, uh, Oprah Magazine just launched. Um, actually, it didn't just launch, but the, uh, the new version of Oprah has just launched, which is uh, the first magazine bookshelf uh, that, that Hearst has done, which allows me to basically buy magazines or uh, download magazines for free. This is something that people don't really know about because they're not really telling it very well, but you can actually download all of the back issues of Oprah Magazine. There's been about seven of them for free. So you can download this thing from, uh, from iTunes, and you can go and download all these magazines and see just, again, how much fun that uh, Oprah and the, and the Oprah team, and what they've done in this space. This, this app won the uh, Appy for Best Lifestyle app. But again, what we have here is just additional interaction with the content, taking what was static, which is you know a magazine, and adding all the extra stuff that you'd want with that, like uh, Book excerpts. So Oprah's been one of the most powerful people in digital. I mean, in, in uh, well, in digital, but also in publishing. And what we've done is we've added the ability to, you know, read an excerpt directly from the magazine, share directly from the magazine. Uh, this is the first implementation of share. There's a real exciting stuff. Uh, there's a whole lot of sharing stuff that's coming to this, this uh, experience. And I actually want to give a call out to the daily because they do such a wonderful job of sharing, like the ability to go, you know, to say I like this page and to send someone, you know, essentially that page in a website is a great solution for sort of merging the, merging the, the difference between, you know, people that are fully, fully focused on what this content can be and have tablets and people that haven't gotten those, don't, ha haven't done that yet and, uh, and want to. So um, there's also a whole buy section so I can, buy stuff, I can, I can go buy directly from Amazon, I can buy from, from Barnes & Noble. I could also buy directly in the app. And you know the fact that one platform is powering all these different types of media allows me to do that. So I'm actually going to, and, and actually one more thing is there's also a favoriting. So I can also take things, I can favorite them, I can save them for later. So this is, uh, Oprah also is full of, Lots of little interactions, so it's, it, it looks completely different. So this 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 allows for complete a complete way of uh, of basically making something look any way you want it. So it's very very customizable from a from a graphics perspective. Has Oprah specifically has got tons of tap interactions. What they're doing is they're making a lot of they're just making a lot of places where you can tap on stuff and. It, changes what you see. And you know, we don't really think that uh, interactivity needs to be you know, hurling rocks at birds or hurling birds at pigs. 
I mean, it, I mean this, is, this is print, right? And, uh, and we think that sharing is a big important thing, but we also think that, that, that you know, that the amount of, th these are beautiful vessels we're trying to build, and if you fill these vessels with great content, great things will happen, and your customers will really love what you do. So um, this is, that's how we deal with uh, some of that content. Here is some others. This is, uh, this is something we did for uh, Disney. This is just, this is a graphic novel, right? What they did is they took this graphic novel and they turned it into a series of paintings with very small little tap interactions. Um, there's some audio, but um, this also has audio that plays automatically in it. Um, and uh, just a, another way of sort of taking what has been, you know, traditional content and transforming it into this space. Um, this is a, another one. This is for National Geographic. This is uh, called the Dinopedia. And um, this is a, uh, a dinosaur encyclopedia. Again, an example of a customer that didn't have a ton of assets. These were not layered assets. They didn't really, like we couldn't take the backgrounds and make them 3D. It just, it just didn't exist. So how do you take something like this and actually make it really, really fun? You know, you can add some tap interactions. You can add things like, uh, we, we suggested that they added a lot of audio. They took the experience and made it King. Everybody knows Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it's the most popular. So, <laughs> a little bit of direction turned this thing into a crazy experience that made it like that. And actually, uh, just a little tiny bit of love, a little bit of treatment turned this content and made it much more exciting. We also we had we had some access to videos, but not a lot of access. We took that video and we really curated it. We made sure that we got exactly what we wanted so that we could make something really, really fun. Of course, it's not a dinosaur book, is it, if a big dinosaur doesn't eat a little dinosaur? So, um, yeah, this is, does not end, ooh, doesn't end well for the little dinosaur. Um, so uh, I'm gonna move to some other things. Um, same platform, different content. I'm gonna turn off multitasking because Multitasking is not always my friend. Um, okay, so you saw pagination. Esquire did pagination up and down. Oprah did pagination left and right. This was the, uh, this is a product that we made for Houghton Mifflin Hardcourt. This is actually the first textbook to be used inside American public schools. Uh, it was made for Houghton Mifflin Hardcourt and it was, uh, it's a test that we did um, where 500 kids in California got iPads and five classes of kids uh, were tested sort of as a test group against uh, the rest of the state. And this started in September. And uh, this, is, uh, this has been a very successful pilot. Um, but this is, so this is one of the big sort of pedag pedagogical problems of a math book, right? So I was a learning disabled math student. And uh, I spent years and years and years sitting with tutors trying to figure out, you know, how to learn algebra. And uh, so when, it, when we were making this book, you know, it was very important to us to appeal to students that were both the turtles and the rabbits, right? And I was representing the turtles. And so what I tried to do was I tried to actually learn algebra again. And what we did was we, so I found that when I started reading this equation, when I got to about here, I wanted to kill myself. I just, want, I, I, I just felt like, oh my God, huh, how much longer do I have to finish this? And you know, all the anxiety that came with basically everything I felt about math. And uh, what you have here was we, we came up with a, another idea. And this idea is called math motion. What we have here is now a step-by-step -step way of engaging the content because we feel that when you slow stuff down, actually makes it much easier to engage. And we were right because this happens to be one of the most popular features inside the app as general, in general. And how do we know this? We know this because there are analytics on every page, every action, every tap, every swipe are all basically collected for a teacher server that allows the teacher to understand how the student is performing 
what they're doing, and how, how much time they're actually spending on task. Here is um, there's also a, uh, there's a math teacher inside the book, in case the math teacher that you have is, uh, you know, is maybe not, maybe like the math teachers I had, which is uh, not ideal. Um, so a bad teacher doesn't mean that you don't, the bad teacher doesn't mean that you basically miss out on the experience. There are uh, lots of problems, so there's lots of test modules in here, so tap to, uh, this is a multiple choice, this is, uh, you can, there's hinting built in, here's a little scratch pad so I can show my work. Um, there's also a whole notation system, so notes are these little glyphs that I can move anywhere around the page, that I can tap on, and I can do all kinds of things, from change the color, to share, to record my own voice. Gotta get the audio back up. Record my own voice. How ideal. Um, there's also a whole tool section. So now I can take the content and I can say, put it into a graphing calculator. Uh, I can, this is algebra tiles, which is a visual way of, uh, of um, representing equations on a page. So uh, this is a test product that's been in the world for about, um, well, since September. It, it launched in iTunes uh, uh, maybe about a month ago. There's, there's a number of other books. There's a geometry book. There's more coming. But, uh, you know, all running, all HTML5, all running inside a uh, Objective-C wrapper, portable to other platforms, and, uh, and working. So um, here's something else. So uh, same platform, um, now running children's books. So uh, we just launched Mark Brown. Um, this is a, uh, basically, it's now reading, but it, it has word highlighting and also has a, uh, a really gentle way of moving through the experience, uh, what we call, a, what we call a, uh, a motivated slideshow. Now, what you have here is a very simple, very simple idea for what a kid's book is. And there's a reason that we've done that, right? Because the reason is, is that there are bazillions of books, of kids' books in the world, and that there are only a few that will get the attention of one of those, you know, really, really great apps, right? The, uh, you know, the fantastic work that Callaway does on Miss Spider, incredible, right? A, uh, uh, you know, but how do we take that experience and how do we make, make it possible for lots of people to, make, to use this stuff? How do we build tools that let regular people, regular publishers, start to get their content into this platform. So what we've done is we've built experiences that are really designed to be, uh, to be not content intensive. So that when I'm building a experience, I'm trying to limit the uh, additional art assets that I'm gonna ask for my struggling publisher to create. So what are some of those what are some of those things that we can do? Well, we can add things like, uh, we think record your own voice is probably one of the best things that we can do because uh, you want to talk about making media personal, right? Arthur's class was working in the school garden when Mr. Ratburn began to explain their next class project. Arthur's class was working in the school garden when Mr. Ratburn began to explain their next class project. I mean. We, it's great when Mark Brown is reading it to you, because Mark Brown is one of the greatest children's authors ever. But when it's your dad reading it to you, it suddenly it becomes a little bit more personal. It becomes a little bit more meaningful. So wh wh what else can we do? We can also do very simple things. We can do coloring books. We can do Puzzles, we can turn every page into a puzzle. All wonderful little activities that allow for uh, 
the experience of making the content to be easier and, uh, and, and also less asset intensive, but still a wonderful experience for a child. Um, so um, we're also building authoring tools that actually allow regular, normal, from a publisher all the way down to an individual to actually build these things. They're web-based. Uh, I, I was hoping that I could show some of them today, but uh, I, uh, I'm going to wait to do that. But uh, we're really excited about where this platform is going and where, uh, you know, and getting these tools into regular people's hands so that normal people can start to take advantage of some of these amazing platforms and start to publish and create more and more content that we'll, uh, that we'll get to all enjoy together in this new world. Uh, and I was going to take some time for com uh, questions now. Ah, here we go, Josh. All right. All right, so if anyone has questions, just head to those microphones on either end. Um, I'll start off with a question for I'll you. I'll be in the General Zarkon chair. Um, <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so, so here's a question I have for you. So yours is a business that's, that's uh, very much tied to the platforms. Sorry, I should peek into the microphone. That's very much tied to the platforms on which you develop, Android, iOS, et cetera. Um, how do you deal with the constantly evolving nature of those platforms and the fact that any moment um, they could replicate products and services that you offer, which I, I think they've done to you in the past. So Yes, yes, that has happened to us before. But um, so how do we, so, you know, Listen, Apple is making the most amazing products that any company has ever made, you know, ever. We, they're just, these, are, these are fantastic things, and this is their field. It's their bat, their ball. It is a closed system, and you have to be aware of that. And that, you know, you have to understand that, um, that you, know, you have to basically build a product that continues to evolve and continues, you have to keep pushing and keep making stuff. So, what Josh is referring to is that you know we basically built an iBooks product before iBooks, and um, and when iBooks came out, that product was in jeopardy, but you know that's that that happens. And what we did was was we built kids books and magazines and textbooks before that happened, right? And we basically tried to put ourselves in a position that you know where where you know where we were pretty wide, and that's that's a hard thing for a startup to do, but you know. It was a very important decision that we made. And you know, sometimes a tiny little pontoon boat in the wake of an aircraft carrier can get knocked around a bit. And we have been. But uh, you know, we love, we love what Apple has created. You know, the, the app is the, uh, it's, the digital, it's the digital monetary unit of content, right? I mean, it's, it's the thing that any person, any creative person that wanted to make something but didn't want to make a website you know, five years ago, because their a website couldn't make any money for anybody. You know, if you're a content creator, you know, it, it didn't exist until there was an app. You know, and so we are in awe, and uh, you know, we're really happy that uh, that that they've done what they've done. Um, all right, anyone questions? No. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Not yet, but that is a request that we're hearing quite a bit. Is essentially, some, we're calling that, uh, you know, it's to personalize, to basically say, the, this content is this big, but I want to do this, 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 and this page, and that's all I want to do. Yes, we will be able to do that, but we're not, we're not quite able to do that yet. But that's a, that's a great, that, that's going to totally revolutionize teaching. So, we don't have too much time left, but, but one other question, speaking of textbooks that I have. Um, is what you know? A lot of these schools are, are so far behind the times when it comes to digital stuff. What's the biggest barrier for actually getting these textbooks into schools and getting them used by children? Um, well, you know, the way that textbooks are bought and sold in this country is a very sort of established process, and the only way that any, I mean, the only way that any small company is going to get textbooks used in, um, you know, in public schools is to work with them. You know, I mean, like, the, it, I mean, Houghton Mifflin sells 60% of the textbooks in American public schools, and you know, just the way our educational system works means that you're really going to have to that that, you're, that 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 
not that there's not room for innovation, because there's lots of room for innovation, and there's lots of apps that are being used in schools that aren't made by you know, those companies, but if you want to actually be making textbooks, you're really going to have to be playing within those very established mm -hmm. uh, worlds. All right, well, it looks like we're just about out of time. So everyone, uh, thank you. And thank you, Josh Cafel. Give everyone Thank you. Thank you.